Crap. I made a mistake on a CNC project. IDCwoodcraft.com Hello my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, the company you get your CNC router bits from. And in this video, I made a big boo-boo on a CNC project. And you're gonna find out what I did and how I fixed it. So we were working on a project here this is a, what they call a sandwich sign. It's one of those signs that a storefront will put up in front of their store that closes up, you can roll it away, it comes out like that. And it's just a sandwich sign. So what I was doing was I was cutting this project out like that and I goofed up in several ways. Vacuum table problems, my zeroing problems, and a couple other problems but I'm gonna walk through this project and let's see if you can catch where I started making my mistakes so make sure you put in the comments as soon as you see my first mistake so let's dive into the things that I did and you're gonna learn a couple things along the way at the Vectric software at the same time so let's just dive into this project and see if you can catch where I make my mistakes let's go let's go back in time and see where all these mistakes started to happen what I have to do is for the bottom of the sign, we are going to cut out a little section here, so it's just a little bit open at the bottom, and we gotta do this on two panels. So when it comes to designing this on your, scene, on your design software, we have to take into account that we are cutting from the outside of the project into the project and then around and coming back out to cut out that piece. So we're gonna jump into the Vectric software. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'm gonna put it on the Phantom with the vacuum table. You're gonna see how vacuum tables hold projects. Vacuum tables are really nice features to have on your CNC router. So we're gonna dive first into the Vectric software. I'm gonna show you a little technique of how to handle this. And then we're gonna get onto the Phantom CNC router and we're gonna cut this out and you're gonna see how vacuum tables work. We start off with the plain project. This is 24 wide by four feet, uh, four, 48 inches tall. So I've got that set up in the Vectric software here. We got the job created. I'm gonna click OK. The router bit is gonna start over the material and then it's gonna come in, cut that little cutout and then trail off back outside of it. So that we get a nice straight cut as it enters and as it leaves. So here's what we're gonna do. While we have this selected, we're gonna press the letter N on the keyboard. That's N for Nancy. And what that does is it turns on the nodes. And we are simply gonna grab these endpoint nodes, the one on the left and the one on the right, and we're simply going to grab them with the mouse and we're gonna stretch them out. But we wanna make sure the snap feature is turned on so that we grab them and pull them straight. So when you go up to the upper right section of the Vectric software, you have these 12 icons. The first two icons on the left, we want to make sure those are turned on. And you know they're turned on when we click the little, the, uh, when the little blue box is around the two icons. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click the first one here and that box went away. That means that that snap feature is turned off. So we want to click that to make sure it's turned on. And what that allows us to do is work with uh, just uh, horizontal lines or vertical lines and make sure when we're dragging these nodes that they stay on the vertical lines. And I'll show you what I mean. We're going to grab this node on the left and I'm holding my left mouse button down and I'm pulling it down. Now you see this dotted line that has formed? That is where the software is snapping my mouse to that line so that the line stays straight. So all I'm gonna do is just simply pull it out and we're gonna come out a very specific distance. I'm still holding this mouse button. We're gonna come out one inch and here's how we do this. As we have pulled this away and we're staying vertical, I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard and hit enter. And then I can let go of the mouse button. And you see now that we've created the, or we've extended the line. And we'll do the same thing with the other node. I'm gonna grab that, pull it straight down. I wanna see that dotted line. And I'm going to hit one and enter, and now we have created our node. Now, I want you to notice this green node right here. And what the green nodes mean on any of these vector uh, design stuff is that is the start point for the router bit. So that is the side where the router bit's going to start at, and then it's going to come up and go around and go back down. Now, one of the things we want to make sure of on this is that we, when we cut this out, we're going to cut it out with the quarter inch 
roughing bit, the beast, because it's not an area where we have to worry about aesthetics and the beast is going to knock it out really quick. You'll see. You'll, <laughs> this is one of the router bits you want to definitely get in your, or your arsenal, but I'll show you about that in a little bit. No mistakes yet, but one is coming. Let's see if you can catch it. If you do, give me a comment. But we want to make sure we're cutting inside the line. I don't want to cut on the line. I want to maintain his design to some degree. So what we're going to do is, first of all, turn off the nodes by hitting the escape button or hitting the letter N again on the keyboard and now you see the nodes have gone away. And I hit escape to deselect that component. We're going to come up to this little blue arrow up here in the upper left and what that's going to do is that's going to switch us over to the tool path area. So now we have that up and we're simply going to do a profile cut. Now what a profile cut is telling the router bit simply to follow a line. So that's, that's what a profile is. It's following a profile, and we're going to do a profile cut on this vector. So we're going to go right into that toolpath. And we want to make sure we're cutting to the full depth of the material so we cut it out. Now, the first thing, when you're ever doing a cutout on a project, you want to make sure that you measure the thickness of your material. Most material is not what it's listed at. For example, we've got uh, plywood that's listed or labeled as three quarter inch. But when you get your calipers and we measure it, all right, we get the IDC Woodcraft calipers. If you don't have calipers while you're doing CNC work, you have to have calipers. You just need it to measure things, especially when you're getting a little more precise like this. So you can get a set of calipers at the IDC Woodcraft website. It's listed uh, in the links below in this video, in the description of the video. So we're going to zero out the calipers and then simply come over and measure it. And it's listed at 0.75 or three quarters of an inch, but it's actually 0.71. So we need to take that into account. At the same time, we need to make sure we cut through it. So we're going to tell the vector software that our start depth is going to be zero and our cut depth will be 0.725. So we're going to a 0 0.01 deeper just to make sure we get our cut all the way through. And we are going to use the beast roughing bit, which is already listed in here. The Beast is a roughing end mill. It's designed to remove material really quick. In this case, I'm just making the cut real quick and demonstrating a bit for you so you can see exactly why you want to get one of these things. And the big, the big thing we want to take uh, into consideration is are we going to be outside the line or inside the line? And what that means is the softwares, when we tell it inside or outside the line, and we'll say we've got a, we'll just come over here and look at, uh, we'll, we'll just use this grid line on my long mill here. And we're gonna follow, tell the router bit to follow the line. And when we're doing it outside the line or inside the line, that's gonna offset the router bit to one side of the line or the other. And the software would tell us if we are on the right side, but I don't know which one is outside or inside on this until I actually run the tool path because it's an open vector, meaning that it has a start point and an end point. For example, a circle is a closed ve vector. There is no end point to it. But in this case, we have open vectors, so I don't know which way it's going to select when I do this, so we're gonna click outside the line and come down and we're simply going to give this a name first. You should always name your tool path. So we'll call it uh, Sandwich Cutout. And we're going to use the, the Beast router bit. I'm going to click Calculate and it says no vectors to selected, which I do this all the time. Select it, calculate, and now we have our tool path right here. You can see that the router bit starts right here and goes around, but we don't know what side of the router bit uh, of that cutout is the router bit is going to run. So we're going to go back to the 2D view by clicking the 2D view in the upper left, and now we can tell which side the router bit is running on. So the dotted line is the actual design line and the router bit path, which is what we're seeing here with the arrows, is 
indicating number one that the router bit is moving in this direction and it's on the right side of the line where it starts right here. So in other words, it's inside of the cutout uh, or outside of the cutout, which is where we want it to be. Now I'm going to show you the difference. We're going to go back into the toolpath and click inside left. <clears throat> and so what I think inside left means is it's going to be to the left of this line because there technically is not an inside in this line. That's the difference between an open and closed vector. Uh, a, a closed vector like a circle has an inside and an outside. A line doesn't, so that's why it goes left and right. So when we click this after we've clicked inside left, then calculate, and then look at the tool path again by going to the 2D view, now we'll see that the router bit has not only changed direction, but it's outside the dashed line right here. So we want to change that back. So we're going to simply go back to outside right and calculate that. And that's it. That's with our toolpath. So now I have to save the toolpath. So we're going to simply go to save toolpath. Since I am running this on the Phantom CNC router, I have to select the right post processor. Post processor tells the software how it's going to generate the G code and what codes are going to be in it. Right now I'm using the GRBL inch, which is for my long mill. We're going to go to the, the G code arcs and write our toolpath from that. So I'm going to click that. We're going to go to where we want to file at. And we need to give this the name that we want it to be. It says uh, sandwich cutout beast. That's exactly what we want it to be. And I'm going to click save. And when we go to the directory, we have now created that, that file. Now I've got to take that file. I've got, since I'm on the Phantom, I have to import it to a USB drive and transfer it over to there. There's no mistakes yet, but one is coming. See if you can catch it. We have now loaded the program up into the Phantom 4x4 CNC router. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this machine. This is a pro level machine. Now I have a long mill benchtop CNC router over there. This one is a, a machine that's a freestanding machine or floor model machine. It's got a lot more ass behind it. We have a six horsepower spindle on it. It's rack and pinion drive. We have a vacuum table on here. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about vacuum tables real quick. The way a vacuum table works is if you look down below here, there's a big vacuum pump here. And this vacuum pump will draw air from the bottom of the spoil board. The air will actually pass through MDF. It's a porous material. So when you put MDF on a vacuum table, you have to seal the edges of the MDF. So all I do is just put a bunch of glue on it so it'll seal all that up because air will take the path of least resistance and you don't want any leakage. So you're going to have leakage coming to the side. On the top here, we would have leakage everywhere, but we have zones here. There's four zones on this machine for the vacuum. We've got one, two, three, four. And so the vacuum zones are divided into two foot squares here. There's one there, there's one back there, and one over there. Now you notice I've got this padding here. This is a vacuum mat that actually makes the, the uh, vacuum work 80% stronger. It, it actually confines vacuum to smaller spaces and it actually works a lot better. Now vacuum does make a bit of noise, but first we got to set the machine up. Uh, number one is I'm going to put the, the, uh, the board, board number one on here in a certain position and I'm going to mark it just with a marker because I, this is not a critical cut and that way that marked line I can just take this board off after it's cut put the second one on and run the machine. Now I want to show you the router bit we're going to be using. The beast is what we call a roughing bit which is designed to remove a lot of material really fast. As you see in this clip right here this is the beast cutting at a full one inch depth at an 80% step over at 1,000 inches per minute, doing it through maple, a hardwood. The reason we want to use a tool like this is if you have a lot of pocketing work, it's designed to cut your runtime down of all that roughing work by five to 10 times. So your projects run a lot faster. Then I'll take a marker and I'm simply going to draw me a line. That's all I need. I know I've got this line I'm lined up with. 
and I got my reference line over there. The router bit is going to start one inch out here. It's going to come down to the surface here. All right, so I've got my mark. I just want to confirm my mark is there, which it is. So I can bring my, my plate back, my piece, and we're going to zero our router bit after everything's squared down. At this point, we're going to be making a lot of noise because the vacuum table is going to be turned on. We need to make sure the zone, the proper zones are turned on. So I got one and two turned on uh, before I actually turn on the machine and run it. We're simply going to set the router bit. We've set it for this lower left corner and the top of the material. So we'll use the uh, Z probe and we will cut slightly into this vacuum mat again. But that's okay. That's there for that. So with the Phantom, you got this plate here. We're just going to make sure everything is clean. And by the way, uh, before you put something down, you always want to make sure your vacuum mat is clean. And so with the Phantom, we put the probe under there. We've got oh, roughly a quarter inch, which is what we want. And I'm going to simply press the tool setter on the control here with the Phantom. And it's going to run down. And that's it. The router bit is now set and at this point we simply run the project now i just made two mistakes when i set this z the first one was i was ready to start carving but i didn't set the x zero and y zero yet now <laughs> i don't know where it would have started but right away it would have caused an issue if i didn't have my hand on the stop button so that was major mistake number one i'm going to talk to you about how to resolve that because i know that's a common problem First of all is why did I make that mistake is because I was busy making a video for you and wasn't thinking a whole lot about my, my project. So I was doing too many things at one time. And the second thing I did wrong was I probed the Z incorrectly. Now, it looked like I did it correctly. I used a probe tool, I set it on top of the material and I did the automatic tool setter function. But the major mistake that I made was I didn't have the vacuum system turned on. In other words, the project was not pulled down all the way as you'll see later on this video when I do my first cutout it's just it's not going to cut all the way through because I didn't take that into account so let's go back to the x0 y0 setting issue we as creators we forget this stuff all the time there's just too many things to do during a setup that I'm sure you've made mistakes and it's all because you missed something in the setup. And that's why I've created the CNC project setup checklist that you can have for free if you want it, where you follow this checklist and that will avoid like 99% of the mistakes that you make on your setting up your CNC projects. Setup is the most important aspect of getting your projects going right and making sure that they cut right. One of these steps, if we miss it, then we have uh, set ourselves up for failure. Now this setup sheet here looks like there's a lot of steps. There are extra steps in here like making sure your bits are laid out and you're checking your router bits to make sure they're in good shape and then there's a whole double check feature right here. So this ensures that we are doing everything the right way. It's kind of like a pilot's checklist. We don't want to take off in an airplane where the pilot hasn't done their checklist. They have checklists to make sure that plane flies safely and you don't get in a crash. It's the same kind of concept. We want to make sure your CNC project turns out exactly as you expect because you've put a lot of work into it. And if you've had mistakes before where it ruined a project, you know how frustrating that is. Following a simple checklist like this, it doesn't look simple, but it really is. We do most of the steps on this anyway. You follow this and that will avoid many, many mistakes that otherwise you would make, that I make, because we just don't remember the stuff. There'll be a link in the description for this setup checklist so you can download it for free. It's all yours, you use it religiously every time you set up a CNC project. Let's get back into this. Let's see if I've made some more mistakes. That's the beast CNC router bit. You saw how fast it ran through the material that was running at 600 inches per minute. So this is a tool that is considered a roughing tool, but it actually cuts pretty clean. You might want to consider getting it. I'll put a link down below in the description of this video if you want to get one, but definitely check it out. 
So I clearly didn't get it all the way over here, which tells me that I didn't set my program up properly. So I'm going to get back into the program, find out what I did wrong, and run it again. And uh, our depth I've cut. It's hard to see, but we got a little bit of material left there. So the thickness, I didn't set the thickness quite right either. So this didn't cut out quite as deep as I wanted it to, and so I need to check this and see what's going on. So when I measure the depth of the calipers, it's cutting at 0.69. So there's probably a little bit of difference from where I probed it uh, to where this cut is. That's not unusual. And we've got very gently coming down on this because it's foam pad and it looks like it's actually almost 0.75 so this is one of the things when it comes to to lumber even stuff like this the thickness is going to vary so what i didn't do was measure many points around it uh, and check this corner relative to where i'm cutting at now i want to re-emphasize what i just shared with you about measuring your project material as you saw in the early part of this video i measured roughly a 0.71 thickness on one part of the plywood. And now I'm checking and measuring roughly 0.75. That's why we get calipers to do our measuring and checking our material. What you wanna do every time you're working with a piece of material is really check it all the way around. So you check many, many points. So 0.748 for this piece of oak. And I come over here, 0.76 over this short of distance. This is all 14 inches. This is why in many cases we will surface projects before we carve them too, especially if we're doing something like a V carve like this. Because if you're dealing with random thicknesses like that, this is gonna come out messed up. Um, this one doesn't look so bad, but you will see, especially if you're doing fine carving. So make sure you get a set of calipers we got one here from IDC Woodcraft. I'll link it down below in the description. These are industrial grade calipers. There's industrial grade and there's non-industrial grade. You want to get the good stuff. So there'll be links down below in the description for this at the IDC Woodcraft store. Let's keep going. Now I've gotten back into the Vectric software and there's two things that I didn't do uh, or the reasons this happened. You saw in, the, in my design, I actually drew those lines down but I did a control Z and I actually undid that. I was doing something else between shots and, and messed up this design and I didn't go back and check myself. So very quick and easy fix. We're simply gonna come up and select that line again, hit node, grab the node, draw it down, hit one, enter, and we're good with that. Since I'm creating videos, I'm doing two things at once and that just reemphasizes the, the things like setup checklist, going back and double checking our project before we run it, like do all the tool paths and then go back and double check the tool paths to make sure that they are done right. And the material, I measured that part and it was actually 0.75. So this is one of the things when it comes to lumber that the thickness of the lumber does vary as you move around uh, the, the material. It just, from this point to this point, maybe a point up to a 0 0.0203 difference. So I have to just change the depth of cut on this and we'll be ready to go. So we simply just rewrote the program and uh, now it's coming deeper. It's gonna cut all the way through. But what I've done is modify the program. You saw it went around three times. On the second board, it's going to go around just once and cut the whole thing out at one time. This is what the beast is designed for. It's not designed for these one-off one little passes. And I fixed this area right here. So we're going to rock and roll. We're going to turn the vacuum back on. something. I had to stop and think for a minute as to why I set my depth but it's not cutting all the way through and that's because this is a thin foam pad when that vacuum turns on it's actually drawing the material down so I didn't probe it while it, the vacuum was on I probed it when the vacuum was turned off so the material was raised up a little bit that's what my problem was so we're gonna vacuum turn the vacuum on and we'll reprobe it and cut it again
see if I got it right. And there it is. There's a little bit over here that was, but that's it. So what we're going to do, I'm simply going to replace the board, and we're going to run it again. The beast is going to do this cut out in one shot. From the, from the computer. Now here was a major mistake that I made. The vacuum was turned on, but what it did not do is double check the, the material. There was stuff underneath it. When I did a previous cut and I lifted the thing off, it left sawdust underneath and that created an air passageway that actually came through the sides of the material, like from the uh, bottom of the material. And so it wasn't being held down. That's another reason why we use this checklist. We need to use this every single time we do something. So if we turn the vacuum off and turn it back on, we've got to double check that material. That was a major mistake that almost made this project ruined. But as you'll see, I did compensate and come up with a way to make it work. Okay, well, uh, so we, we actually cut out this thing. We had a couple mistakes as we designed it, and I had to correct that mistake. Added a little bit of accent to this project. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. I uh, gave you some tips on things to do and things not to do. And, and uh, yeah, have a great day. Better tomorrow. Check out the Phantom if you're looking for the next level CNC router. And I'll talk to you later idcwoodcraft.com